Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. We are here on the second day of the Global fin uh, Fintech Fest here in Mumbai, uh, where country's uh, biggest sort of fintechs as well as some of the smaller fintechs are out here, uh, a part of a three-day function uh, that's happening in Mumbai, uh, where they're discussing how the businesses will move forward, what are the kind of innovations that they need to look out for uh, and the resilience, uh, the uh, inclusivity uh, as well as sustainability of the fintech uh, ecosystem. Uh, today uh, we have with us uh, Ajay Seshan, the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Paymate with us. Uh, Ajay, uh, welcome firstly. I wanted to ask you to begin with, what what are your thoughts on this on this fintech fest? I mean, it's, it's become bigger than ever now. It's amazing. I mean, uh, it's mind boggling. Uh, the, the amount of fintechs over here participating, the solutions I think we've come a long way when I saw it last year and we were not even present last year from a booth perspective and we have a booth this year. So it's uh, incredible the amount of progress uh, on the fintech front and we're leading uh, the fintech revolution globally, right? You know, the impact UPI has had and it's going global as well. So similarly, I think all the solutions coming out of India are also going to be powering uh, solutions globally. And, you know, as company Paymate now is expanding into Middle East and you know, CMEA and Asia Pacific. So, so I think this is a be best possible platform and forum to propagate uh, fintech in India. All right. Let me talk to you a little bit about payment itself. Now, uh, the, the business that you're in, uh, the, the B2B functioning, uh, that you are currently doing, I wanted to understand, uh, what is the status of that? Because we, a lot of digital payments that we talk about is ends up being B2C. And that conversation sort of revolves around that. But I was hearing from another founder who was talking about a $42 trillion opportunity, uh, you know, from a global scale uh, perspective. But, but tell us a little bit about what the situation is. Yeah. So uh, let's get the numbers right. Globally, uh, commercial payments is a $135 trillion opportunity. Okay. India itself is a $8 trillion opportunity. Okay. And then if you look at the uh, India landscape, I think uh, we've solved for a lot. Uh, but largely on the consumer side, right? So we're just starting to tap into the B2B side of things, right? right? And B2B, uh, you know, in India, if you look at the 8 trillion, probably 50% of that is electronified. Right. So which is moving on, you know, uh, basically EFT corridors. The, the, the other 50% is on cash and check, even today. So we have a lot of progress to make on that front. And secondly, I think even on the portion of the payments, which is moving on EFT rails, uh, there's a lot to be done uh, from a true digitization standpoint, both for enterprises and small businesses. So at payment, how do you view digitization of, of uh, your customers' uh, businesses? Yeah, so we started on the enterprise side. Uh, we uh, you know, identified uh, pain points. Uh, although enterprises have tools, uh, you know, IT tools, ERP, what have you, right? But there are manual legs, okay, A. And if you look at typical enterprises, uh, you know, paying, paying the suppliers, you know, a lot of working capital sort of tussle is going on, you know, suppliers wanting to get paid on time, et cetera, et cetera. So for our, uh, from uh, our standpoint, how do we A, digitize and automate the entire process, all the legs? How are we able to reconcile all of that? How are we able to provide working capital tools, both from an enterprise and a small business standpoint, so that you can extend the payables for an enterprise and you can, uh, you know, enable early payments for a small business. So that's a basic one two sort of approach we have. And we built our platform around that. And today, the same platform is now being taken directly to small businesses, either as a direct to small business or via partners uh, like uh, banks and uh, fintechs. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the the, uh, the working capital side of the story. Now you have a commercial card that you that you provide to your customers. Uh, what is it that people are looking for when it comes to these uh, sort of payments and receiving these payments on time and doing that through a mode of credit, technically, right? Yeah. So I think uh, it's clear that working capital is is a you know very integral part of the overall offering, right? And and you can provide all the automation in the world, but you know if you're not going to have some working capital angle to it, it's going to be a difficult to sell. Uh, and clearly, at the end of the day, we're saying how we can solve for India Unink through India Inc., right? Mm -hmm. Going from corporate enterprise to small businesses. Mm -hmm. And we've been sort of moving down that value chain. So, so for us, right from the beginning, when we started in the travel sector, 
and travel has been the uh, beachhead for commercial cards. Yeah. Uh, and we got a lot of experience and insights over there. So we were able to now take that use case and say, how can we now take it across to any industry or vertical, any supply chain ecosystem, or any third party aggregation of small businesses? And today we sort of perfected the art of being able to marry a platform, uh, our apps mm. uh, with a commercial card, mm. which is really beneficial to all the stakeholders in these ecosystems. How does that work for you as a company in terms of uh, the revenue opportunities? So clearly we are, uh, you know, transaction uh, driven. So all our revenues come from transactions. So the more transactions on our, on our platform, the more volumes on our platform, the more, more money we make. So it's, it's simple. And since we are using the card as a tool, we're actually enabling even our partners, right? So we work with uh, banks, we work with the networks. And for them, they're looking at monetizing uh, further from a B2B standpoint. So clearly, we become an enabler for that. And we're able to move the traditional uh, B2B transaction, which can go from point A to point B, bank account to bank account, to card to bank, and thereby solving for working capital and also enabling all the providers, including ourselves, to make more money out of it. Lastly, I want to uh, check with you now. This is something that every reporter asks every founder, but is there a funding uh, or fundraising uh, opportunity that you're looking forward to or do you think you're, uh, you're okay with for now? So we are in the in a, in a pre-IPO uh, fundraise mode right now. And as you know, it's in public domain. We have IPO aspirations. So, so we are in the midst of, uh, you know, closing that out over the next uh, 30 to 60 days. How far is it? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> so so uh, it's work in progress is all I can say. <laughs> okay. Uh, lastly, I want to check with you. So this question of the IPO being work in progress, this is something that I've heard now from multiple people who sort of came to the market, said that we want to raise funds, but then they're, they're keeping things on hold for at least the foreseeable few months. Uh, I wanted to ask you, is, is this the current market conditions that's probably not allowing uh, that entry or is there something else uh, that's working out? No, clearly. So every company has its own compulsions. Uh, and we all know that, you know, after the first cycle of uh, Indian companies, tech companies going IPO, uh, there was a bit of a setback to that process. And uh, generally markets were, you know, not so um, embracing. I think that's changing now and there is definitely opportunity for tech companies to go back to the public markets uh, from an India perspective and that's starting to happen as we speak. So I think there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, light at the end of the tunnel uh, and we believe that, uh, you know, the, the, the conditions are starting to look favorable and it's time to reconsider. All right. Thank you so much, Ajay, for joining us on this conversation. Pleasure talking to you.